Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our videos every Wednesday, sometimes Friday and always on Sunday. Today, um, it's a good day anyway. Seems to be pretty good. And uh, the cows down ahead of me there, they're going down to the 11 acre fields here. It's the last grazing in this field. It's one of the silage fields, just kind of try trying to get it grazed out. Um, in this video we're going to talk about kind of grazing infrastructure and how we can improve for next year. Um, this year, I see the way the weather's kind of turning now. It's not easy to get places grazed. And I have to just look at a few different prospects that I can do to improve things in a way that in meaning extra entrances extra entrances into fields um spur roadways i'll explain what they are in a minute and back fences all that on land the cows out and get them grazing and um, ground conditions are okay so far we're not doing too bad this is the last grazing here so i just have to click the wheel i left it there Bit of damp down by the ditch, but I wouldn't have much notice of that. Um, this is the last grazing in this field, like I said. Thank God, because this field will not take much more. I wanted to get it grazed out because if you leave it there now, it's going to be left there until next spring. The heavy butter grass in the spring is much good either. So it'll come back now, there'll be a nice coat of grass there for the spring now when it comes back again. You could argue that I could graze it on more, but I just can't do that. I just don't physically, I just can't do that because I just haven't got the weather along slightly to do it. Down at the very end, now they're happy with the grazing way down at the very end. The silk grade covers the grass, nice and heavy. So there is enough grass. Cows are content, they're full, they're milking well. They're milking about 16 litres a day, which is still pretty good this time of the year. They're only getting two kgs of ration in the milking powder. They're not getting much ration at all. They probably won't be increased until they get silage. Contemplating that they will probably be in this weekend um, because there's a lot of rain coming I think the weekend now and they could be in. My ground when it gets bad, when it, when it gets wet, it gets wet. Um, I've noticed this year even the difference in the two reseeded fields, the, the two ploughed fields are way drier. So from now on we'll definitely plow a field or two every year because it just makes such a difference to the land. So the grazing way here is nice covers of grass down here. I would love to graze this off more. I really would. For slurry in the spring. I would, honestly I, I would, but I just I just don't have the option. I, I can't because if if I keep travelling up and down here, I'm just gonna destroy the field. It's all the jungle spreader now, isn't it? Imagine the chrome more hit that. Oh god. <laughs> oh god, I think someone was looking down at me there anyway. Be some crack if be some crack if I hit that next year. Make bits of the probably damage the bed. Well probably break a blade anyway, definitely, or break a roll, pin out one of the hats probably on the bed of the more. But anyway. Regardless. Got the stones. That was a sh that was a shit troll as well. Anyway, ground conditions down here. This part of the field is always drier. The lower part of the field is drier always. Because that's a nice fall off it. There's some covered grass here. We'd next just if we had all the extra cows that we have dry, we'd be flying. And that's not an option at the moment. Um, I meant to speak about fertility in a video because people were asking me about the cows, how they get on this, this year breeding season. Breeding season went well, um, in fairness. We only had less than 10% empty, so we'd only fork, we'd only um, four cows with no calf in them. Um, three definitely empty, and one cow that we're not sure she's empty or not. 
Um, but she's going to the factory anyway. She has, she has to go because she's a bad leg, so she has to go anyway. So all in all, four cows get, are getting sold this year. Went well. We're on track now to have 65 cows milking next year. At the moment, that is probably going to be the target until we can get more things organised. Um, probably don't want to go any more than 80. I think that's going to be enough for the land we have. It being all reseeded, it being all ploughed and all organised. Have to do a bit more work on infrastructure, water trucks, water pipe, um, grazing. My, my fencing is good, but we have to just do a few small bits to, like I said, make extra entrances, make more entrances into paddocks so we can come at them from different angles. A few little small roadways here and there just to help things out. Um, but we'll talk about that later in the video. Um, the sense of tags worked well, they did. I have to say, really impressed with them. They definitely pay for themselves this year. Picked up every heat. Um, had a few breakdowns, had a few breakdowns in August at five cows that came back bulling. They were in, they were inseminated in May and I thought they were going in calf, they came back bullying, which in a week of each other, the five of them came back the same week. A bit disappointing, I have to say. Um, but um, the bull um, the bull served them and I AI'd them just to, I normally wouldn't AI that late in the year, honestly, but I just AI'd them because look, at least you could milk them on a bit later into December if you had to next year. So I AI'd them and thankfully they all kept. Um, one cow, one first calver down the end there. She didn't go in calf, a first calver. She kept, re kept repeating all the year. Um, scanned her, not, there was nothing wrong with her. We, we scanned her, couldn't find anything wrong. Tried a few different things. She held, she held then for about, um, for about two months. Then she repeated again. She kept cy recycling then every three weeks. Um, plan for her is probably just, I could sell her but I'll probably just dry her off and she can go with the heifers next year and come back around again. Bit annoying, bit of a pain, that's farming, what do you do? Um, all the other cows is old cows and that didn't, the other three cows are old cows that just didn't, that just didn't go in calf. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for next year. Like I said, covers of grass are good. We have to just, a few things I want to do next year is I've applied to do a grass measuring course. That's one thing I'm going doing. That's really going to help us knowing how much grass we got in the fields and measuring. Just so I have an idea what I'm doing, where I'm going and how we can manage it better and how we can allocate just enough grass per cow and per grazing. So we, we're not giving them too much. We're not giving them too little. We're getting them just enough. That's going to be a big help. At the moment, sadly, sometimes, look, we all know ourselves, we all know our own farm, we know how much to give the cows. I just think it'd be a bit easier if we could measure and know where we're going. So I'll just grab the reel now up here and I'll show you where I want to put a small road for next year to help out the grazing. So, I have the reel anyway. I just threw it in the corner yesterday. Um, for next year, I think I'm putting a small cow track up along here. Just a single cow track. And at least then, I'll be able to, this time of the end of spring, I'll be able to back fence and elk just enough in all this feed. Because as cow numbers go up, all going well, all these feeds in the home farm will become more allocated, they will become more allocated into the grazing block. So they're going to, Need a bit, bit more management. And I think a track up here, a spur roadways, spur roadways. That's what Tagus called them anyway. Um, it's going to make a big difference, I think. What I would do probably is just dig up the, the ticket layer, t t take the scraw grass off there, possibly, and put some rock down, probably. I don't know, a pencil stone or well, probably two inch clean under or something like that. I'll have a trunk in there, might do that, and then put some dust over it and just kind of whack it down so it's nice and compacted. 
and a really improved grazing here because just to give it a I can't it's happy to manage because you're constantly walking through it in good weather it's fine in bad weather it's a disaster and you can't graze it because you're walk, constantly walking through it because it has only one entrance into the field it's kind of annoying so at least that was done be a big help so next thing now we're going to move the wire and did it feed for tonight even though it's meant to be a lot of rain tonight so I'm thinking about leaving them in but look we'll see but anyway we'll move the wire now so this is one of the few fields that actually has two entrances and this is the field I actually receded last year um didn't video it unfortunately but the reason this field is two entrances is because this was the original entrance and what i done was is i put an entrance over in the corner because basically if you want to shit the cows out of here um they come out here but then you'd have to stand over here because so many and then as the cows are coming out they would walk along the wire and then when all the cows were gone you couldn't get them out again so that was one issue i had with it the first paddock over there has two entrances as well same problem and we had to put a gate at the corner because we couldn't get the cows out in the morning because they kept um i'm not sure why the gate was put that on that side i think that's where the gate always was so to down the wire here um a person might say that's way too much for the cows but the reason i kind of give them so much is that i don't want to poach this field is dry i don't want to damage it and at the same time i might get another grazing out of this two grazings next time but i'm pretty sure this is definitely my last rotation i'd say so and i want to have enough grass left for spring i don't want to grit out all my paddocks completely because that's just not going to help me at all in the spring because I, I won't have any grass much anyway so let's go cover the grass here um a person asked me before and i forgot to mention it in a video what pigtails i use and what reels i use simple question is they're all cheetah simple answer they're all cheetah they're made in ireland they're all everything i use is not much cheetah really was using gallagher gallagher is probably the best everyone says that but uh, you're paying 70 quid for a reel i just said look i said the cheetah is cheaper and i don't see what's wrong with it really i think it's just a great reel it's a pretty good reel that's a good job for me anyway Right, so this is the covers the grass here. It's nice clover and everything. Receive makes such a big difference. Um, this is probably I might get one more grazing out of this. Let's see. Turn the camera. Sorry, I might get one more grazing out of this after. I'll see. Maybe after this round, we'll see how we're getting on. This field is very dry, which is lucky. Obviously, because it's been reseeded last year. It's been ploughed. Ploughing helps with the drainage. The other field I reseeded, I'm not sure I grazed that. I'm just going to try and jump over here because I want to just up the read in the next field. I just jumped the wall. One second. So it was actually a big hole in there, so I'm trying to walk along the wall. I'm not sure, I don't think I can jump it. It's a bit high, so I'm just kind of walking along the ledge here. It would be way easier to go around walk on the farm roadway, but that'd be no fun. There we are. Ah, okay. I forgot the fence was there. The problem is being a farmer, we've been like. Sometimes that'd be like Spider-Man, nearly <laughs> to jump over things and everything. But anyway, it's up here. 
see all the machinery is packed away nice and tidy so that was that was a tough day and all that in but it's all done now so this gate again because I don't want to how many times have the cows broken into this here? twice because it's the rope so we need to chain at some stage in the very near future so this is the field the cows are going to enter next hopefully I don't think I'm going to graze the reseeded field the newly reseeded field anymore I just don't want to damage it and they say it's bad to leave to graze down I see the paddock on the first year they say you're better off to um, leave a butt of grass on it just to give a kind of cover for the year for the winter and we'll try and do that but land is still okay it's still like it's like they don't just walk around the gates and things or around the gaps but it's still pretty good I thought it'd be worse to be honest I thought it'd be actually very bad like it's still I'm still able to walk it's still good here like my, my heat isn't really going down through it the way I determine if I can't graze is and something we learned that I talked to a person to a lecturer in college about he said if you can put your heel down through it you can't graze it that's the way he put it and i my heel is just about not sinking into it but that was his way of putting it. he said if you can't put your heel down through it tom if you if you, if your heel is going down through it don't graze because you get it's getting wet then do you know which, which makes perfect sense but this still isn't too bad it's a nice cover of grass here as well like it's still a nice cover these two fields it always amaze me these two paddocks because the only two paddocks in the farm as long as i can remember they have never grown a weed in them never i, I don't know it's unreal isn't it? so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give them half this field and i have my own ways of doing grazing but i want to improve it better and set up the wire here now Is it straight? No, it's not. But it'll do. <laughs> um, I think it covers the grass here, like, in fairness. And this seed, it, this, uh, th th these grasses are about 30 years old. And these are the last two I'd probably reseed because they're just such good fields. But, like I said, people are probably wondering now, watching this, why isn't he giving them less and trying to skin it down? Trying to graze it down more. If I get more rain, I might not even be able to get out here. So that's why I'm kind of preparing myself for that. And my farm gets wet, it gets wet. And I know myself when they have to go in, they have to go in. There's no point leaving them out causing damage. That's not worth it, in my opinion. And if I was to do something, what I was looking at doing at some stage, just putting a roadway a spur roadway in between these two fields and doing that it'll give me the option of putting back fences up in these two fields these two fields are always good and normally you can get out early in the spring with these two fields so what I was thinking of doing is putting two road a roadway up along the center here at some stage, maybe not next year, no, at some stage. Definitely the, the big silage field that will be done next year, but definitely along here. I was thinking just so it is sort of both fields. Instead of having one roadway up there and one down there, we did just one. Now, they mix it up back fences. And my other option I was thinking about doing was putting next year an entrance here for this paddock so at least then you can come at it from this side and take out some of the ditches there and put an entrance down there 
But I feel to take out some of the ditch there from the other field. Just to give three or four different entrances, two or three different entrances. To make this grazing that bit easier, I think it will really help. The silica covers the grass around, even though we see the pad out, let's go up and see the silica cover of grass. I'm kind of wondering, should I graze it or not? I don't think I will, I think I'll stay away from it. The covers of grass are good. And like I said, if I could measure it now, like I'm just guessing that there probably is a cover of probably a thousand here. A thousand kg dry matter per acre, per hectare, I should say. Maybe a bit with it. That's my estimation now, might be 1200 maybe. That's just an estimation. The reseeded paddock here. Just pop into it here. And another thing as well, I can forgot to mention, because people are probably going to ask what do you reckon caused some cows to come back bulling? Um, honestly, I'm, gonna, I'm blaming the heat on that one. The heat definitely, I'm blaming the heat on that one. This is the receded paddock. You see, there's a great cover of grass here. Honestly, I'd love to graze it. But, do you hear that squishing? We have to remember the skin top of the ground is really tender and not fully hardened on this field. And if we left, if we graze this down tight, we could do damage. So we're not going to do that. And we're going to just probably leave it go for the year, I think, I think. We'll see, we'll talk about it, but I'd say that's what will happen. So guys, just a bit of grazing infrastructure and ideas video, what I'm going to do. Um, might interest some, might, might interest others, but just want to talk about grazing conditions and the cows and how they're doing and all that. Um, I'll find the drone up now so you can see the farm. And the farm is still got some nice grass there. Nice grass, that, there is nice grass around. So we'll see. Hope we can keep on in a while longer. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Please like, subscribe. Now see you all in the next one. Thanks. Bye.